there are people we may never stop missing we've loved people there are memories that may never leave our minds memories of yesterday but here's what the Bible says this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me it didn't say forgetting the bad things I've taught you things don't have to be bad and tragic sometimes you have to just be strong to say you know what yesterday I wave you goodbye I love you I miss you I'll keep you in my mind but be gone for good I have to face the future because that destiny is waiting for me don't tell me about the story of something bad that happened do you know apostle I would have been married 20 years ago I understand can you hand over those ashes you are still holding on to it and many good men are coming now God is saying can't you see beauty we are saying ashes of yesterday are you willing to give that beauty and get out of the way I mean give the ashes and let beauty come I, my first car a ghastly motor accident destroyed it my first crusade nobody would leave all those things embrace the new is someone ready to pray go ahead and begin to speak to the Lord everyone falling online and praying whether you are sitting whether you are standing take any position you're most comfortable but please pray pray everyone pray there is an answer to hopelessness there is an answer to despair there is an answer to confusing tragic situations the answer is found in this message that my God your God is able to make all things work together he may not have caused the all things the all things may not have come from him but he has the power to make all things sad stories all things negative stories all things tragic situations painful situations all things to work together to the good of them that love the lord and to those who are the called koinonia take a minute to invest in prayer Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Turning my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. That nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to Christ. Someone is praying. Lord, I know that it ends up in praise. I lost my loved one, but I choose to trust you. It will end up in praise. I lost my job, but it will end up in praise. I believed you for the visa. I believed you for the healing. I didn't want to go through the surgery. Now I'm having to go through it. Oh, I had to go through it. Now I've lost my organs. But in the midst of it, I still know that beauty can become a, a replacement for the ashes. One more minute to pray. Apostle, I lost ministry to wrong mentorship. I, I lost ministry. I lost my place and my relevance to carelessness and licentiousness. But the Bible says there is hope. Listen carefully. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells you that there is hope and that hope maketh not a shame. When the tree is not caught, the scent of water can bring it back to life but sometimes the tree can be cut away from the root turned to logs of wood burned to coals then it becomes ashes when it becomes ashes don't try to make a tree out of it again when it becomes ashes look to the master he comes with beauty joseph don't just desire to return back to your father's house that may not be your destiny again that house you left you have left for good but look towards the assignment in the palace there is a prime minister in you there is an ordination upon psalm your three. life psalm 3 please help us media 
Psalm 3 and verse 1. Lord, how they are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for you in God. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that nothing keeps my head down in this season. I am lifted supernaturally. Shana Lift your voice and begin to pray. But O oh Lord, as a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Acts chapter 12 please give it to us quickly Acts chapter 12 from verse 4 the Bible says that Peter was kept in prison And the Bible says they kept him in prison intending that after Easter they would bring him out so that the people would kill him verse 5 Peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him what happened and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door that kept the prison verse 7 the bible says and behold the angel of the lord came upon him and light shined in the prison and they smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and the chains fell off from his hand verse 8 and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind up thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment before thee and follow me verse 9 the bible says and he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but he saw as though he was in a vision Ten. Hmm. and when they were past the second the first gate there were three gates the first gate brought him out of the prison the second gate was midway and the bible says they came onto the iron gate that led to the city listen to me this is the gate that stops visibility there is a gate that stops the visibility of men it says the gate leads to the city your business can be there but there is an iron gate listen and the bible says that this gate opened on its own accord when that gate opens the next thing you see is the city is the gate that controls influence are you ready to pray in the name of jesus every gate standing my way of influence and visibility i declare be broken right now lift your voice and pray he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder he has broken the gates of bars and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen to me. We are going to pray against delay. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil of others to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten of them will see him. They all had oil, but because the bridegroom delayed, the oil of others finished and they missed out. You are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my destiny. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my business. Speed to my career. Someone is praying. Pray, pray, outside, pray, online, pray, make decrees in the name of Jesus. 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 We are still praying over speed. Look at me. Listen. The unit of destiny is time. God can bring you help speedily. Are we together now? Yes. We are going to pray. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jisrael we are going to pray lord bring speed to my life bring speed to my life lift your voice and begin to prophesy speed 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 someone prophesy someone declare speed to my destiny speed to my destiny speed to my destiny speed to my life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 125, verse 3. Psalm 125, verse 3, please. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Why? Lest the righteous put their hands in iniquity. The rod of the wicked. You are going to command every finger of darkness and evil over your life, your family, your children. You are going to command it to give way. Are you ready? Lift your voice and pray. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. 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 Job chapter 5, please. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. We are praying. Please take this prayer serious. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. Are you ready to read? Want to read with me? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Number one. Next verse, please. In famine. He shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Next verse. 
thou shalt be hid from the scourging tongues of men neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth why listen it says for thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field that means nobody can use any element of creation to make enchantments against me you use sand you i, I have a covenant with the elements of creation that they will not fight me because i was given dominion over them say in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit no enchantment no divination against my life and my destiny shall thrive lift your voice and pray i am in covenant I am in covenant. I am in covenant with the stone. I am in covenant. I am in covenant with the stone. I am in covenant with the stone. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Please read with me. Are you ready? One to read. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. How long? Always. By all means. If it means clearing the troublemakers out of the way, by all means. If it means making a way, by all means. Lift your voice and say, Lord, by all means, give me peace. 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 Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. There are people physically, you see them moving. But in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says that they are bound. Next verse. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn in Zion. Verse 3. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Verse 4, I receive it for myself. It says, and they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations and shall repair the waste cities. 
and desolations of many generations verse 5 and strangers this is where we are getting to you don't need to know who will help you strangers and strangers shall stand and feed. listen 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 strangers shall stand and feed your flock it says and the sons of aliens or foreigners shall be your plowmen this was what happened to a man called Mephibosheth the Bible says and David said is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake and they called a man called Ziba who had 15 sons the Bible says he sent him to Lodeba he said there is a crippled man called Mephibosheth go and fetch the man the king said when he came he said although you are crippled even Mephibosheth said am I a dog that the king will be sending for me he said the children of Ziba would plow the land for him he said but as for you Mephibosheth you will eat with me at my table here forever keep that scripture there listen this scripture is a deliverance scripture stop thinking the miracle will come through the person you know it's none of your business how God will bring you the breakthrough stop troubling your uncle your auntie every time you are saying God visit me your mind is going to a particular person that real estate man leave God to decide who like a movie director let him decide who will come with the blessing are you ready to pray make decrees in this season strangers are feeding my flock strangers are feeding my flock the sons of alien are coming to bless me help prepare blessings rising from everywhere hallelujah two prayer points and we're done are you ready to pray we're going to pray for nigeria how many of you know that we owe a responsibility to pray for this nation you see the happenings around this nation the church should not be silent it's not about going around to make all kinds of unguarded statements our assignment is to pray pray like believers with intelligence he said pray for the peace of jerusalem they shall prosper who love you we are going to pray we cannot fold our arms and allow the devil to continue to destroy people you heard the testimony of our dear auntie here the precious daughter just came out of the, her school and these wicked evil people entered a car and that's how they carried her killed other innocent people whoever digs a pit for you i stand by my god and i declare they must enter that pit hallelujah now listen her man was plotting the annihilation of the jews and he was clearly cooperating with vashti and god needed to remove vashti and when god brought esther esther forgot her assignment and she was enjoying the palace and mordecai sent a warning that warning is for all of us every time you hear trouble somewhere don't say it's still far don't make the mistake of esther mordecai said do not think when they are done with us from afar you will be spared the moment you hear that there is trouble anywhere you owe a responsibility to stay the power of hell don't just say i am secured esther knew that if she kept quiet one day they would discover she were a jew and they would kill her and she took the risk i'm going to meet the king even without his invitation if i perish i perish one of the things i'm praying and trusting that god will do to the body of christ is to help us to rise to that point of maturity where we are able to take the corporate burden of the body even if personally there is nothing wrong with us are we together when you hear that there is an accident you don't just say oh the members of my church were protected it is a cry for everybody are we together now 
you must be able to hide your individualism so that the corporate good of the body will speak so just because nothing happened to your business during the pandemic just because you are okay just because you have security forces around your house does not mean you should negate the fact that our nation needs help as responsible believers part of the ministry of priesthood is to stand and midwife deliverance and say no lord it cannot happen not in our lifetime this kind of evil that plagued the nations we must stand as priests are we together for a very long time we have been largely very selfish once trouble does not come near you you read the news and say oh that's fine it is them once it is not your child that is kidnapped no problem no we are going to pray in one minute cry to the god of heaven father we declare let the angels be released over nigeria let the angels be released over this nation we declare peace we declare safety 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 hallelujah hallelujah let me make decrees over our lives now decrees are powerful hallelujah prophetic words don't only reveal they create they make what is not there to be there we can call the things that be not and make them to appear we can call the favor that be not and make it appear we can call the lifting that be not and make it appear are you ready to pray in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead every door that has refused to open over your destiny i declare let it be open right now let it be open right now in the name of jesus everywhere the helpers of your destiny are men instructed by god to hold your hand and lift you i don't care where they are across this nation and around the globe i stand by the voice of prophecy and i command them to show up in your life 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 listen to me every strange pattern and occurrence in any family circles of negative things that keep repeating themselves i stand by the god of heaven and i come by the rod of a higher priesthood i break those patterns now and jabez was more honorable than his brethren the bible says the mom bore him in sorrow and named him jabez and for a while things will not go well in his life and one day he said oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast is someone ready to pray listen god is a god of increase is it is the will of god that you keep moving from glory to glory not that you become stunted in one position i pray for you in the name of jesus expand expand to the left expand to the right i'm praying for you by the power of the holy ghost expand to the east expand to the north expand to the south expand to the west expand overseas in the name of jesus christ Let's decree favor. Ah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the kind of favor you have not seen in your life. I stand by the God of heaven if you can believe it. I declare between now and next week Sunday, return with a fearful testimony 
your favor. I speak it from the depth of my spirit. Return with a fearful testimony of favor. We shift systems, we shift structures, and I command favor. I declare favor. I command favor. I declare favor. Can I pray for your spiritual life? Everything that has killed your hunger and your passion for the things of God. You used to pray in the night, but now you sleep all till the day. There is a spirit of slumber that wants to eat up your destiny because a new season is about to open for you. So the devil does not want you to stay in the place of prayer. Receive an impartation of the grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Hear me. We are wrapping up. I'm speaking to you prophetically. There are many of you seasons are about to open in your life but listen listen the devil wants to use offense to kill those seasons beware one of the traps of satan when seasons are about to open is that he uses offense everything offends you your husband your wife your children your boss make up your mind that your joy will remain because it is with joy you draw out of the wells of salvation i declare joy unspeakable Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Hallelujah. Let me pray for those in business. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. And I believe in miracles. I don't care how it has been before now. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, what has refused to walk in your hands? Go back right now and watch wonders happen. Go back right now and watch wonders happen. Go, uh, Go back and watch wonders happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers one last prayer for tonight there is something called honor see you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself it takes another person to confer honor upon you honor is a grace that is transferable he said thou shall find Joshua in whom the spirit is upon and he says that thou shall lay your hands upon him and then he says you shall take some of your honor and you shall give to him honor is transferable the cure for shame and the cure for reproach in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare may this mantle of honor the grace that distinguishes you even among your contemporaries may that grace rest upon you now what's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to I bet it's fear fear that whispers you're not enough you can't do it you'll fail but what if I told you God never intended for you to live in fear in fact he has given you everything you need to overcome it Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. 
fear doesn't get the final say in your life, God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four, verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.